Hey guys, what's up? Tyler here. So, Star Trek has always been presented as a future where humanity is able to overcome its differences and forge a new path beyond our petty squabbles here on Earth. But there's a major component of Earth's future society that aids us in our exploration of the galaxy, and that component has been receiving more and more attention with each successive installment of Star Trek. I'm talking, of course, about artificial intelligence. AI has long been a fascination of science fiction writers and real-world researchers alike. For a long time, a far-off hypothetical concept, uh, just as fantastical as warp drive. Today, artificial intelligence is real and exists in many facets of our lives. Trek lightly approaches the subject in a few episodes of the original series, presenting AIs that are simple and easy to control. This is evident not only with Landru, ruler of Beta 3, or MUD's androids, but also the Enterprise computer itself. But in the next generation, the character of Data adds a level of complexity to narratives about artificial intelligence that often evoke themes regarding civil rights and the philosophy of consciousness. Data's positronic brain is incredibly sophisticated, a remarkable feat of engineering that stupefies many contemporary engineers in its ability to simulate personhood. In his journey to become more human on a social level, Data experiments with numerous methods, including augmenting himself with an emotion chip. Oh, yes! I hate this! It is revolting! More? Please. Later, android organic hybrids, such as Dodge and Soji Asha, take this augmentation to the next level, blurring the line between organic and artificial life in a way that is only paralleled by the Borg. But in the face of all of this, one question remains. Star Trek's utilization of seemingly impossible technologies such as transporters and warp drives aside are its predictions about uh, progress to be made in the field of artificial intelligence too optimistic or not optimistic enough? In other words, did Star Trek miss the mark on artificial intelligence? Much of modern science fiction that revolves around AI and robotics is heavily influenced by the works of Isaac Asimov, who wrote the seminal novel I, Robot in 1950. A collection of short stories published over the preceding decade, I, Robot has not only had a substantial impact on the field of ethics and computing, but also introduced the idea of the positronic brain. The term positronic was based on the then recently discovered positron, or anti-electron, a subatomic particle of antimatter that creates photons when colliding with electrons at low energies. The positronic brain also enables the transmission of thoughts and impulses in a robot, and through an unspecified process, helps relay cognitive information in decision making. Needless to say, the positronic brain is a fictional device, a hypothetical device on par with transporters and FTL drives. We don't know exactly how one would be constructed, as the theoretical physics involved in its design are still in their infancy. But that hasn't stopped AI engineers and researchers in embarking on a quest over the past half century or so to create AIs that approach human intelligence, not just in terms of computing power, but also in terms of emotional behavior. While we've certainly built some impressive machines that can do things like beat humans in jeopardy or uh, perform other tasks that are beyond our strength, we still haven't necessarily cracked the code when it comes to uh, simulating consciousness, particularly the ability to learn and solve problems. While some may observe that we are closer than ever to perfecting artificial intelligence, whatever that means, uh, it's also important to consider that the very definition of AI is constantly shifting. This is in part due to a lack of consensus among competing subfields of AI research, the divide between machine learning and logic-based artificial neural networks, as well as the differences in philosophy that have ultimately left AI in a perpetual state of goalpost shifting. This is known as the AI effect, a phenomenon in which researchers will discount real gains in the field by saying it's not true AI. Examples of this include the dismissal of optical character and speech recognition, mastery of strategic gameplay, self-driving cars, intelligent routing and delivery networks, and military simulations as been there done that in terms of developing 
routine technology. These feats, which would have understandably been considered science fiction in, say, the late 1950s when the AI discipline emerged, are not considered impressive anymore, and the cutting edge of the field is looking far beyond these simple accomplishments in retrospect. There's a theorem called Tester's Theorem that can be summed up as AI is whatever hasn't been done yet. Let's switch back to Star Trek for a second. This similar effect can be observed when talking about AIs in the 23rd century in the original series uh, as opposed to AIs in the next generation era in the 24th century. As I mentioned earlier, the Enterprise computer can be considered sort of an AI. Uh, it is able to recall information, perform diagnostics, and make logical assessments but it largely follows human commands. So one could argue that it's not true AI, and in fact, many of the real AIs, particularly androids that Kirk's Enterprise encounters, were built by aliens. Between this and other technologies, such as the Dot 7 repair bots in Discovery, it's clear that 23rd century AIs are rudimentary compared to the likes of Data in the 24th century. What makes Data special is his positronic brain, a revolutionary step forward compared to the duotronic and multitronic based systems of the previous century. Activated in 2338 on the Omicron Theta colony, Data is the fifth android built by neuroscientist and cyberneticist Dr. Noonien Soong. Soong's great-grandfather, Arik, was fascinated with the prospects of genetic engineering and raised a group of augment children developed from embryos left over at the end of the eugenics wars. Noonien Soong's work was conducted largely outside the purview of the Federation, uh, who might not have greenlit such a project with state funding. As stated in the Next Generation episode, The Measure of a Man, one of the biggest obstacles in creating a stable positronic brain uh, was determining how electron resistance across brain filaments would be resolved. Technobabble aside, it's clear that positronic engineering has a lot of physical considerations that must be addressed, especially given that we're dealing with antimatter. Furthermore, it's likely that uh, Soong was not the first to attempt such a feat. He had simply succeeded where others had fallen short. Additionally, given the Federation's skepticism of conscious human-like AI, rooted in a humanist philosophy that values organic life over machines, it's not surprising that it took this long for Soon to accomplish what he accomplished. Or is it? See, the thing is, technology is advancing at an ever accelerating pace even today. While Moore's Law, which states that the number of transistors per square inch on a semiconductor doubles every two years, has been slowing down, revolutionary techniques involving 3D circuits as well as quantum computing mean that we will likely continue to push hardware beyond its modern limits. Regardless of hardware, though, the software involved in machine learning and complex neural networks is uh, getting more and more complex by the day, meaning that we're getting closer than ever before to the so-called singularity, when the pace of technological growth exceeds our ability to understand it. Artificial general intelligence, or AGI, is the ability of a machine to learn and perform any task that a human can, and it's supposedly just around the corner. Sometime this decade, it's expected that we should be able to construct a machine that matches or even exceeds human intelligence, and in 30 years, a machine that can process information faster than all humans combined. It will create a runaway effect that will eventually force humans to receive neural upgrades to keep up with the ever-changing technological world. In this way, Star Trek did miss the mark. It presumed that AI development would be too slow, even taking World War III and the post-atomic horror into consideration. Surely other Federation worlds should have developed sufficient AGI by the 22nd century, right? Shouldn't this world be more like Detroit Become Human? Oh my god. The truth is, when it comes to predictions about AGI being achieved in this decade or the next, uh, and leading to a runaway technological singularity a la Terminator, there are good reasons to be skeptical. Many predictions have already been made about the achievement of AGI. Uh, some researchers thought it would be possible in the 1980s, but that decade came and went. In fact, the graph that I showed earlier uh, depicting exponential advances in AI as a function of Moore's Law is flawed in its own way, created by famed futurist Ray Kurzweil. This prediction is based on another logarithmic plot that he developed to showcase advances in computing power across centuries. But one critique is that these 
milestones are cherry picked and that the logarithmic scale is inappropriate for what have largely been linear advances. Additionally, his prediction about hyperintelligent AI developing in the 21st century doesn't take into account various obstacles that AI research faces. There are numerous theories as to why AI isn't advancing as quickly as many had hoped or feared. But most of these explanations boil down to the fact that human cognition, driven in large part by emotion, is not very well understood. Human neuropsychology is a field that is ever evolving, and overcoming our gaps in understanding the brain will be critical, many say, uh, in solving a lot of problems facing AI research. It's hard to say how long this would take. Um, but given the complexities of understanding the mind, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if a few hundred years is really what it would take for advances in that field to fit the mold of the puzzle pieces missing from AGI. Four polls of AI experts conducted between 2012 and 2013 uh, yielded some interesting results. When asked how long until they would be 50% confident that AGI would arrive, the median year was 2045 with the mean being 2081. But 16% of these experts predicted with 90% confidence that AGI would never exist. Roboticist Alan Winfield once wrote in The Guardian that the gulf between modern computing and AGI is as wide as the gulf between space travel and faster than light propulsion. This is a curious framing, and when applied to Star Trek, uh, it would seem to suggest that human-like AI should have been feasible around the late 21st century anyway, since that's when Zephram Cochran conducted his historic warp flight but there are other considerations. Regarding the singularity, Martin Ford uh, wrote in his book, The Lights in the Tunnel, that massive unemployment due to automation, uh, a real concern among many analysts, would reduce consumer demand and destroy incentive uh, to invest in technologies that would bring about the singularity. He calls this a technology paradox, pointing out that the level of technology required to bring widespread automation, even of white collar jobs, is far inferior to AGI. This is because most routine tasks, and even some non-routine tasks, can be accomplished with very narrow programming. Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen also observed that uh, human creativity has diminishing returns as opposed to accelerating ones, as measured by the slowdown of new patents since 1900. The more progress science makes towards understanding intelligence, he says, the harder it will be to mimic. This is a similar argument for why transhumanism may never become mainstream. Aside from the cultural resistance towards merging biology with technology, on a practical level, the investment necessary to provide affordable upgrades for everyone will be hindered by both economic and computational factors. Also, that cultural resistance isn't necessarily unfounded. If you have a perfectly functioning arm or leg, there's no good reason to replace it with a prosthesis. Uh, and as far as augmenting eyesight or intelligence, well, that's a wonderful recipe for a stratified society. More likely, these upgrades will be limited to niche subcultures. Star Trek understands this in a way that is largely underappreciated in modern sci-fi. What makes humans human is what will enable us to do great things, and technology is simply a tool that is available to us to help us in our endeavors. There are some cyborgs in the 23rd and 24th centuries uh, uh, but these individuals' implants are uh, often the result of life-saving medical procedures. Besides, the aftermath of the eugenics wars and World War III are still leaving their mark on Earth society, even hundreds of years in the future. As far as androids and AI, then, uh, it makes sense that huge leaps in the field would uh, experience setbacks as expectations about the field change. The myriad of scientific disciplines involved in understanding AI uh, computer science, psychology, linguistics, philosophy, etc., all have unique problems in and of themselves that will need to be overcome for AGI to be viable. This is not to mention the taboo that uh, could arise around trying to give emotions to machines. I love you, Father. Perhaps in the late 21st century of the Star Trek timeline, uh, Earth did have powerful AIs that could perform specialized tasks with incredible difficulty, and these machines caused social upheaval. In any event, uh, taking the time between the present and the mean date that AGI is estimated to be achieved, 2081, 
and multiplying that time span by a factor of four, we arrive at a date of the 2320s, not too far off from the year that Dr. Soon first activated data. Where do I get the number four? Well, admittedly, it is arbitrary, but the purpose is to demonstrate that uh, in Trek's world, a number of obstacles, technological, sociopolitical, economic, ethical, and otherwise, will have to be overcome in order for AI to truly approximate human consciousness. And of course, Data is not the end-all be-all. His children, so to speak, may represent the next generation, so to speak, of human AI interfacing in the Star Trek universe. This would put humanity at a crossroads at which we must decide how to avoid falling in the trap that the Borg did of using cybernetics to oppress individuals and other cultures, as opposed to making them freer. So did Star Trek miss the mark on artificial intelligence? I don't think so. Uh, I think that the time frames established in the franchise are perfectly reasonable. Uh, given the societal conditions present in the Federation, even with a level of scientific prowess that is far beyond what we will probably achieve in real life. World wars, social taboos, engineering obstacles, and numerous other factors, meaning that we don't create AGI until the early 24th century, is just as legitimate, I think, as saying it takes us until the fourth millennium. The time frames are so far in the future that uh, the number of breakthroughs in neuroscience and computer engineering are profound, even to us today, with our world being as technologically advanced as it is. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please be sure to do that as well uh, so you won't miss future uploads and uh, be sure to click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, then becoming a member or a patron is a great way to do so. Links to those as well as my merch store are in the description below. I'll see you in the next video. Live long and prosper.